Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Aga Tutor, Mr. James Timkudu. I'm happy and very glad to welcome you to this uh, presentation on bank reconciliation uh, statement or simply bank reconciliation as part of our uh, Aga FA1 uh, lecture exercise. Okay? We are still in the learning phase and this is part of uh, the feedback to lecture on week 7 bank reconciliation statement. Alright, uh, I've received many questions from students who were saying that they couldn't understand what the questions uh, were, were meaning in general or how they were supposed to have been attended to. Okay, so in this presentation, I'm just going to uh, take you through the process of doing bank reconciliation statements and uh, along the way, I'll be explaining how uh, you, you should attack various questions when you face them in the actual examination. Okay, so this uh, video is meant to just add on what we learned in the previous video uh, in the normal lecture where we get you the theory uh, concerning bank regulation, uh, bank regulation, as well as the how uh, these regulations are, uh, I mean, are enforced in a carbon setup, okay? Why they are important and how uh, they assist managers or, or financial managers in uh, alleviating or in enforcing controls uh, within the financial system of an organization, particularly the case system. All right, they are meant to ensure that the accountant is uh, accounting for his cash properly. Okay, because in the process of a bank reconciliation, you would see that um, you would see how uh, or the state of uh, the cash balances okay and uh, you would also understand where the differences are emanating from because by the end of the day the cash what the cash book is reporting should tally with what the bank is saying okay but um, on the ground it's very rare to have a situation where the bank i mean the bank balance is actually the same as the cash book there could be certain issues that could have happened along the way. All right, like we, uh, as I have emphasized in the uh, lecture video, I said that uh, there are only two things which uh, we should worry about. Okay, there are only two things here. All right, uh, the first thing is number one is the cash flow balance correct before we do the bank completion we we must ascertain if the cash book balance is actually correct if it is not correct then we have to update the cash book or we have to uh, attend the correction so that we have a good cash book balance right then after we finish that we need to know are they an outstanding issue? Alright, these outstanding issues, there are only two. Either uh, deposit outstanding or payment outstanding. Okay? Either deposits are outstanding or payments are outstanding. When you are saying deposits, you are saying that money from customers is not reflected in our bank account. Alright? The money that has been sent by the customer has not reached or has not been processed or recognized 
into our bank account. It has not been recognized by the bank. So usually these are bank lodgements. Bank lodgements not cleared. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are bank lodgements not cleared. Or they could be unpresented checks. We have drawn checks to pay our suppliers, but they, the bank has not yet uh, processed them. Okay? Or uh, we haven't presented them actually to the bank. We are still in the process. We have written everything and the cash book is, is I mean, knows that we are making a payment. So a credit entry has already been made in our cash book that we are processing a payment but the bank has not yet deducted that amount from our account so these are the two items which affect our bank conciliation so this one these are the items affecting okay let me just say here these two i mean these items are the only one affecting the recall. Alright, these on item two, these are I mean these are the items which are going to affect our reconciliation. Once we ask once we ascertain that the, the cash book is fine, then we only have to worry with the uncleared deposit or unprocessed payment. Alright? So let us go straight to the question and see. We're only going to do five or eight questions okay, from the exercises, from the exercise which we did. Okay, I know there were many questions today, but we are only going to, to tackle the first eight. Okay, we are going to tackle only the first eight questions all right and uh, i just want you to uh, stay tuned for uh, this presentation and you have to flow with me otherwise i would be flowing alone which is also a very dangerous uh, development all right straight to the first question um, a business bank statement showed a balance of 22,640 debit and a cash and a bank and a balance on its cash account in the general ledger of 18,320 debit. Now, which of the following would explain the difference? You can see that there is the, the balance is between the bank statement and our cash book are different. The trick here is that um, you need to understand uh, the bank's position. Bank position and uh, our position. These guys, they maintain their own ledger, ledger account. Okay, they maintain their own books of account. All right, the bank position. The bank is also has maintains a cash book. Okay, and we maintain our own cash book. There is a debit and a credit and. All right. If we have good money, okay. If we have good money. We, it is reflected by having a debit balance. All right, and this is going to be reported in the bank as a credit. If we have good money here, we have money because we are having a debit balance. 
then our bank statement should have a credit balance why does a bank statement show a credit balance because our money is the bank's liability okay our money is the bank's liability they owe us money okay when we want the money they oppose i mean i mean they have to give us that money it's not their money they are only keeping it safe for us so this is why they have a credit balance if we have with money obviously in the bank there should be um, a credit balance but if we do not have money if we are in an overdraft situation okay if we are in an overdraft situation we are going to have a credit balance this is overdraft that's the overdraft position okay here we don't have money so if we don't have money the bank is going to we don't have money so the bank statement is going to have to show a debit balance which means we are in an overdraft position an overdraft, an overdraft position means that we have got a liability we have to pay the bank we overdrawn our balance all right so the bank has got an asset the debit remember is for asset okay which is a receivable we have to pay the bank the bank has got a receivable because we overdrawn our money there was an overdraft okay good now after understanding this let us now attend this particular question okay the question is saying the bank statement showed a balance of 22,640 debit here which means the bank statement was showing 22,640 which is a debit balance okay and a balance on its cash account for this business the balance of the cash book for this business was 16,320 debit okay 16,320 debit so the common is showing that we have got an asset but the bank is saying no you don't have an asset okay so this means that they could be something wrong all right so we say that balance the cash balance the cash book was 16,320 which is a positive figure but balance her bank was negative was um this is the balance of the bank okay the balance of the bank 22,000 which is uh, a negative because we are owing the bank we are owing the bank the bank is good uh, in the eyes of the bank it is a, 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 an asset okay the bank is good an asset uh, which it is loaned us okay we we overdrawn the balance so we are owing the bank uh, money we have to repay that much so the bank does an asset for them so uh, basically it's an it's a negative uh, balance to us okay 22,640 all right so you can see that um, there is actually a difference from the positive from positive 16,320 to negative uh, 22,640 there should be some difference there. and what is that difference <coughs> a movement remember there is a movement 
um, we have to worry about here. Okay? If you simply if you simply do this, you are going to be wrong because uh, let's say 16. Now let me just use my calculator here. You simply say alright, I'm still looking for this calculator of mine. You simply say 16,320 minus 22,640. You are going to get this value negative 6320. This is wrong. That's wrong. You are you did not understand the problem. Okay. The problem with the bank reconciliation uh, statement is that uh, you you are reconciling uh, the difference. I mean, you are reconciling the bank reconciliation statement. I mean, the bank statement and the cash book balance. You want them to be equal, right? So, if you want this balance to be equal, these two balances to be equal, then we need to be very, very careful. Oh, sorry. My pen is misbehaving. My pen is misbehaving. Okay, don't worry. Let us just simply proceed. Okay, let us simply proceed. Okay. What is what matters here is the distance. All right. And understanding that the cash book balance and the bank statement balance should show the same thing. So if they don't show that same thing, something could have happened. Alright. The bank statement is saying that we have I mean the cash book is saying that we have got this balance, 16,312. But the bank, the balance of the bank is saying we have got a negative 22,640. So what this means is that we need uh, to determine to determine the a certain distance that will reach us to this negative 22,640 and that distance is only given by adding up okay we need to add up all right so this simply means that um, we are going to say 16,320 all right plus 22,640 okay which is going to give us 88,000 but the question that comes is why have we aided the reason is that guys our book is reporting a positive thing, but the bank is reporting a negative one so what could have happened is that something should explain why we have a negative balance all right and the only explanation that is palatable is that we have got outstanding deposit okay in our cash book we have recorded um, this deposit which has led us to believe that we have got a debit balance of 16,320 as you can see here Yet, in actual fact, those deposits are not yet processed. Okay? We have recognized them. Because maybe the customer has shown us uh, 
has brought a check to us, okay? Or they phoned us that, hey, look, this is the proof of payment, they send us the proof of payment or proof of check that they've drawn that check and because they are on the way to deposit the bank and we have recognized it just based on the assumption that we trust those guys they always pay okay they always pay from previous history so uh if they show us a proof they send us a proof of payment today, you know, then we believe them but not knowing to us that uh, the bank might take its time to process those checks and so forth. Then, obviously, the, the, the deposit was not cleared. I mean, the check was not cleared, so uh, it was not processed by the bank. We can't find, uh, I mean, it was not credited to us, so the balance is too outstanding. That deposit is too outstanding. So, this is why we are having from 15,320 to a negative 22,000 it means that the distance traveled is 38,900 okay now why am I saying these are lodgements the trick is that lodgements are deposits right so if lodgements are not yet credited obviously we are going to have a low bank statement figure because those deposits by the customers are not yet appearing on the bank statement so we are going to have a low uh, a lower bank balance this is why we are still in, a, in a, uh, an overdraft position the bank is still saying that we are still in an overdraft of 20 dollars why is a wrong a is wrong uh, unpresented check of 30,000. If the checks were still unpresented, these checks are payments, okay? Unpresented checks are payments to uh, outstanding or payments not yet processed or not yet deducted from the bank. So, if we are still having payments not yet deducted from the bank, this simply means that our bank should be having more money. But in this case, the bank is having less money. So, it means that we have got outstanding lodgements, alright, for deposits, which are still outstanding. Alright, so the trick bit was D, D, uh, which we first calculated the 6,320. Uh, this one is wrong, okay, this one is very, very wrong. <laughs> because the, the reconciliation is all about uh, reconciling the cash book and the bank statement all right so we need to understand the distance that or the difference um, in the sense of uh, the disparity okay between this positive balance and a negative balance uh, that disparity can only be achieved through an addition okay you just have to add so that you arrive to that negative all right and you will see here if we use this um let me just uh, erase so that you are not lost let me try to erase this maybe this time the machine is not going to uh, support okay but i'm seeing other machines that matter all right <laughs> the space is now a bit larger okay let us say here all right <coughs> Doing one with my fingers. Okay. all right uh, um, all right let us use this figure 15,320 is provided as a cash book balance okay it is positive and we say less unprocessed uh, checks and we say that these are 38,960. You will see that you arrive at the same statement balance which is the negative. And this is negative of 22,000. 
1640. Okay, but if we had used, uh, let's say, 1620 less uh, 6320, uh, we obviously we we're going to find something like 10,000, which was not the balance per bank statement according to this. The balance per bank statement is. Alright, I'm sure you are you're convinced that these ones were actually wrong. The correct answer is this one. Okay, you understand this. We do another example there. Okay, let us do this one. The cash book balance at 30 November 22 shows an overdraft of $500. Dollars. Checks for 6,000 have been uh, written and sent out, but not uh, yet appear. All right, these checks are not yet appearing on the bank statement. So what are we talking about? If we are still having a check which has been written and sent out but not yet appear, these are these ones are what we call unpresented checks. Okay. These ones are unpresented checks. A payment, not yet. Okay. <coughs> and then uh, receipts of 5,000 are in the cash book but are not yet on the bank statement. These ones are similar. Those checks have been paid by our customers but they are not yet credited to their outstanding logic. Okay, this one is outstanding logic. 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 Okay, there are two outstanding. So what happens is here um, we are given the cash book balance. The cash book balance is showing the proper draft. So how is it presented? We, we said that if the cash book was money shows a debit balance, but in this case case book is no man it is in a overdraft position so we are having uh, balance okay, cash book which is in a negative position an overdraft simply means that we are in a, in, in a negative position so uh, if we start from the cash book then we have to add payments in order to process which is unpresented check unpresented check how much we are told that the six thousand so we have eight six thousand right we have eight six thousand and then uh, less um, outstanding lodgement lodgement not a process for outstanding lodgement of how much uh first of all. so we are going to have balance the bank <coughs> so let me just use my calculator again and see which one here that's negative 500 uh, plus 6000 uh, minus 1000 we're having a 500 And the 500 is positive, so it simply means that we are having a credit balance. So it means that uh, there is too money in our account. Okay, so you can see that this is why B is fine, B is correct. Then, right, just go through uh, this process. Just give it a step-by-step -step approach okay just give it a step-by-step -step approach all right so I said the answer is B yes I indicated that one now we've got question 3 which uh, is a bit long 
your cashbook is a better place to save, but really, it shows a balance, a big balance of 365 uh, I mean, overdrawn. This is actually a favorite exam technique, uh, I mean, a exam trick uh, which examiners would use to hoodwink or to just confuse you. So, please, whenever you see that the bank balance or the cash book is overdrawn, it means that we have put no money in the bank. There's no money in the bank. Alright, we are having a liability there. Now, but the issue you have to understand is the double spend, uh, whether debit or credit. If the bank, uh, the bank statement is saying that we are in an overdrawn position, I indicated uh, initially in the introductory part of this uh, presentation that that balance would be on the debit side of the bank statement. But if the cash book is in question and the cash book is being spoken about, which is saying that we are in an overdraft position, then it means that the cash book will be showing a credit balance. So in this case, it is 760 credit. Okay? <coughs> Alright. Or it is just 560 in bracket with a negative 565. Alright. On comparing with your bank statement at the same date, it's covered as following a check of 67 drawn by you on 29 uh, December has not yet been presented. So this one is unpresented. Unpresented. Check. Or payment notice process. Then a check for $92 from the customer which was paid into the bank and so forth. But the next three has been honored. Dishonored check. A dishonored check is it a, a check for $92 from customers so paid into the bank on um, has been dishonored. So this one is simply has got the same effect as an unprocessed uh, or standing logic. Okay, and process deposit or lodgement or spend. Okay, or lodgement. <laughs> in theory, it has been processed, but it has not, uh, I mean, achieved the crediting which we want. So, by the end of the day, we are going to treat it the same way as an outstanding lodgement. Alright, how do we treat that? Okay, we start by balance. Uh, So in the case of, uh, it's given as 565 credit, okay, 565 is the negative one, then add and process, uh, and, and process the payment or unpresented checks and presented checks. Unpresented checks of how much, uh, 67 dollars, then, uh, Less uh, on a check, on a, on a check of 92. So we are going to still remain in an overdrawn uh, position. This negative will suggest that this is an, an overdrawn uh, position. And uh, negative 55, please don't, don't make mistakes in finding uh, these figures. It's negative 565, okay, plus 57, minus 92, and uh, you have to arrive at a uh, why am I finding 600 here? Okay.
Ok. Hum... Ok, ok. This should be six hundred. This should be six hundred, so uh, it's an issue now of simply having errors here, alright? That's the error. Okay, the answer is six hundred. So let us just forget about this uh, type of error. Okay, the answer is six hundred. Okay, now the question is, is this 600 overdrawn or not? Obviously, this is overdrawn. Okay, balance the bank statement is 600 overdrawn. <laughs> All right, um, so. Don't worry, okay. Don't worry about this. Uh, just know the principle. Now let's move on to question four. Normal bank statement. Normal bank statement showed a balance of thirteen thousand and eight debit. So a, a bank statement showing a debit balance, then it means that we are in an overdrawn position, according to the bank. So when Numal was carrying out uh, his bank conciliation, he found the following 19,680 of outstanding checks, 23,280 bank charges not recorded in the cash book amounted to 432. What amount should be included in numerous trial balance for cash? So, um, once again, you just have to follow. Uh, the principle, all right. So, uh, in this case, we are given the balance the bank statement. So, you can just go using the same flow, you can start with the balance okay, bank statement. This time, we are starting with the balance bank statement. I just want to show you how you do it, all right. But remember, we are told that this is an overdraft position. So, in overdraft position, you just have to always put this in negative in brackets on in negative all right then when we were uh, dealing with or when we said by the balance the cash book we said that we have to add and unprecedented checks but this time we have to lessen them less unprecedented checks they just go opposite unprecedented checks all right so where are the unprecedented checks Obviously, I'm presenting the text as this one. 23, 2, Okay? 23, 2, Then, uh, add login outstanding login. How much a day? Nineteen thousand and eight. In the bank statement, in the bank statement, only do these two items appear. Then we just come to, uh, I mean, balance the cash book. Balance the cash book. To do your mathematics, you have to arrive at negative uh, sixteen thousand six hundred and eight. Okay. This means that we are having a are we having a debit or a credit balance in this case? Obviously, in this case, we are having a credit balance. Okay. We're having a credit balance. This means our answer is A. Okay, but uh, I want you to appreciate 
uh, one thing here. In this particular question, it was this trick figure. Okay, then charges not recorded in the case of amount of 436. Do we have uh, what about them? The question is what amount should be included in normal cell balance for case? Alright, now this is where I say that when you do your bank recovery, you just have to know that there are only these four entries. Okay? Don't worry about any other issue. Okay? You are giving the balance the bank statement. So if you are giving the balance, for you to arrive to the cash balance, you just have to follow these steps. Alright. You just have to follow these steps. However, um, if you were given the balance per cash per cash book then you are told that bank charges were not recorded blah blah then it means that you have to first update the cash book with those bank charges before you do anything else because we do not want to see any other issues or any other entries within a bank account because bank, bank reconciliation only has got these four entries as you can see the balance pay bank statement or balance pay case book then i present the check then adjustment for load bank is outstanding and then you arrive at the balance pay case book or balance bank statement those four entries nothing else i'm sure they are being heard loud and clear now for the liquor bank statement at 31st october 28 shows a balance of 15,400 they subsequently discovered that so you can just do it systematically and um, they can just write it as you read because in the exam you might not have the time to read and read and read sometimes the time will run out of you so what you have to do is just have to read and write at the time so the bank statement is showing a balance of 18,400 Examiner is silent whether it is a credit balance or not. So it's just to, uh, to uh, assume that this is a credit balance because we know you have 13,000 uh, money that's a credit balance. So um, you can safely say that balance. Okay. Thanks, Sydney. 13,400. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Then. They subsequently discovered that the bank has dishonored a customer's check for $300 and has charged so uh, dishonored check. $300. Um, a dishonored check is like a bank login, right? Uh, when we were starting by the cash book, we deducted bank logins. We deducted them. But when we are starting to balance the bank statement, we have to add them. Okay? We have to add them. Just understand that trick. Okay? We have to add them. Why are we adding them? Because uh, they are most favored in effect of. Uh, that was an effect of being outstanding bank login. Alright? That was an effect of having the bank login. Alright? Now, although we've highlighted that in the bank reconciliation uh, statement, there shouldn't be other entries. But you may also put them just uh to show you understand what will be going on all right you just have to understand what will be going on. but basically uh those four entries should be your 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 industrial standard okay they should be an industrial standard however you just have to appreciate even if we put salary not paid then or uh, transport costs 
not yet paid or it, it doesn't affect anything because by the end of the day you just have to record out your cash balance according to your cash book and the balance at the bank all right but you just have to be guided because most of the cases they come around and get it there, this and that oh so those four entries are actually the major ones all right now the examiners might go a step further to check the understanding of how these transactions are led for example in this case the uh, owner check you just have to understand what is the impact of owner check so balance the bank statement is showing that 13,400 was the balance then you have to edit the owner checks right um, and his bank charges or fifth so bank charges you can also talk about them bank charges <coughs> remember the question is saying uh, they are kept with balance prior to correcting the errors and omission to us. Okay? Prior to correcting those errors. So, this is why we are going by this route. Okay? Neither of which uh, is recorded in the case book. There are unprecedented checks totaling 2400. So, unprecedented. <laughs> checks 2400 this one should be negative amount paid in but not yet created but obtain logic obtain logic okay they said they discovered that an automatic receipt from a customer of monthly size has been recorded as a credit in your cash box. A receipt from a customer is good to go. If we make a, an error and we get the data, so there was a double feedback okay, for error. <laughs> Three ninety. All right. Um, this three ninety has got an effect of uh, it's got the same effect with the uh, unprecedented checks uh, in the sense that uh, man is not yet deducted. Okay, there is no deduction of money actually from. Uh, the bank all right so we just have to affect it so actually um in favor of our cash balance so we just have to do that it there all right so let us see what we get here let us see let me look for my calculator again so we get um, 11,900 and this is the balance the cash book all right as you can see here all right I hope that that was a bit you know tedious but uh, that's how you just have to you just have to flow by the principle. You have to understand what would be happening uh, as transactions are being recorded. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, question six is almost the same as question five, but you just have to go through it. On 31st July 2018, the cash book of Starbucks Limited showed a debit balance uh, that is cash at bank of $200. The bank statement showed 
a credit balance of uh, 339 crores, both in the cash book and the bank statement were showing that you take money. However, the following errors were found. Checks in the cash book for 500 have not been presented, so unpresented checks. Okay. <coughs> the amount of 200 each paid in and not yet been created to the bank, so lodgement is a lodgement. Then the credit side of the case book had been undercut by seventy dollars and under added by seventy when looking out the uh, closing balance of two hundred. So when we were arrived at this far, we had made an error, we had made an undercut, right? Then uh, that was on the credit side, all right? So if the credit side had been undercut, it means that. Uh, the payment side we had ignored a certain payment right so which means that that balance there could be uh, could be reduced a payment of 40 by a customer had been sent directly to the bank and was not in the cash book bank charges of 31 dollars had been taken by the bank but were not in the cash book the bank had taken 50 out of the bank account because a check from a customer that had been credited to the bank account later bounced or it was dishonored. This was not reflected in the case book. Reconcile with the bank account and the case book adjust to each is appropriate. So we just have to do the same steps as we did before. Okay? But this time we just have to rush a bit. So there are some like I said you may go systematic by Let's update the cash book and then you go to the bank conclusion. So let us first update the cash book. So we have put our cash book ready. <coughs> a cash book is a T account. Okay, we have put the baby and the credit. You can see here. So uh, we are told that there is a, a debit balance. Balance DD of $200. Then there's a debit balance in the cash book of $200. Then we are told that the cash book, um, like I said, these two, these only two are to be adjusted in the bank position. The rest should be used to update the cash book. So we are told that the cash book side, the credit side was undercut. So we just have to put the undercut on the credit side. So we just have to put on the credit side so that the credit side will, uh, be, will come to its uh, good balance okay the repeated balance then a payment uh, of what was a customer had been sent directly to the bank and was not in the cash so the payment by the customer which is a receipt yeah, of how much 40 bucks all right 40 bucks. Then the bank charges of that one had been taken by the bank but were not in the cash book, so you have to update the cash book. Then charges. <laughs> then the bank had taken 50 out of the bank because it uh, check it bounce, so bounce. Check. Alright, so we then have to update our cash book. Remember, the cash book is to balance. So the larger side should appear on both sides. So, I obviously, the 240 is the larger one. 240, 240. This is balancing the account. We are balancing the account now to find the balance brought forward. So, uh, if we add up 70% of 101, that's 151. 151 minus 240. 151 minus 240. Let us use the calculators. Um, 151 minus 240. We are having an 89 as the balance in figure. So this is the balance CD 89. But remember, we have to take it balance for 89. That's balance BD of 89 dollars. 
now once we've done this then it means that we have updated the cash book we then have to uh, do the bank reconciliation uh, statement <coughs> so in this case we can uh, start with the balance to bank balance to bank to be sure if our cash book is fine we can just start by balance to bank statement balance to bank statement how much was it we are told here that it was 39 credit dollars which is the positive thing 39 then when we started the balance the bank statement what do we do uh, we say unprecedented checks are lessened now and then check so we can just say check how much were they if unprecedented we are told here that they were 500 but so in this case you have to lessen them and then you add now lodging outstanding lodging is outstanding how much were they they were uh, 250 and I say that in the bank statement if only two items pick up two, then we can just say balance the case balance the case book so we are saying that uh, 339 minus 500 plus 250 we arrive at 89 so we can safely say that we did the right thing. This is how you have to update the case book. Okay. This is how you are, then this is the bank completion. Let me. Okay. Then we are done. We have reconciled our cash book. Now <coughs> we've got this question here uh, on Musa. Alright, we are told that uh, Musa's cash book balance was being shown as 5,635 overdrawn. So, um, you can just go straight to the web. The current bank, uh, bank balance is shown in the statement of financial position to be. Now, <coughs> here, the correct bank balance be shown in the statement of financial position is not the balance of bank statement please get me right it is the balance pay cash book all right it is a balance pay cash book we don't necessarily show the balance pay bank statement in the financial position in the statement of financial position but we show the balance pay cash book all right Please let us not be confused there. All right. So it is subsequently discovered that a sending order of 425 had been entered twice, and that a on a check for 450 has been debited in the case instead of credit. Now, here we are simply uh, playing around with the cash book all right but we need to be a bit smart okay so uh, the, the question is of the same trickness um, is that of question I think question number five or question number four somewhere there which we've already done where we are let me just take you a break a bit um, let me just try to take you a break all right question number five yes they're almost the same uh, in that the adjustments are not uh, generic as uh, we have just encountered where we have to worry about those two uh, common entries within a bank simulation. In this case, we just have to adjust to, to go a step further to worry about other issues, okay, 
worry about other issues outside those checks. There could be other issues which you have to uh, consider when you do your conciliation. Okay, but I've really read um, the reported figure on the financial position it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it should be the, bank, the balance on the bank. Although, uh, although it should be the same, but uh, there is need for you to understand that the idea would be to have that balance tallying with what we are reporting in the uh, in our cash flow. All right. So any disparity would be the reason why we carry out a bank reconciliation to tell us where the parity is emanating. Okay. So when you do the bank reconciliation uh, statement, you be trying to understand why the cash book balance is different from the bank balance. All right. So. Uh, such disparities are the issues which are being asked here. All right. So we need to do the bank conclusion statement. Here they want you, they want you to come up with the correct bank value. <coughs> and this balance um, should be. Uh, the same as the balance on the bank statement, yes. Bank. bank statement balance. All right, but we are not, we have not, we have not been given that bank statement balance in this situation. So, which means that we have to calculate it using the provided figures from our bank, uh, from our cash book. We have to start with the balance with the cash book and then we have to arrive to the balance the bank statement. Although we do not have the bank statement at the moment, but we have to ensure that the balance which we find is going to tally with the balance we which is on the bank statement at that particular time. Okay? But in this case we are not given that balance bank statement. So we need to find it out using our our cash book. So how do we go about that? All right, the process is just very simple. We have to start with our balance, the cash book, okay? And we are given in five, six, seven, five, use an overdraft. So it is the negative, all right? Then we are told that it is a to show that the same order, 400, and 25 has been ended twice. If the same word has been ended twice, what does what it means is that um, a receipt has been ended twice. It has been ended twice. So we have to reduce this particular receipt. Okay? <coughs> same order. So we have to reduce this. How do we reduce this edge uh, to the text? So if it has got a sum if it is in an unprecedented check, so the receipt is under the right. The receipt is got a debit. So to reduce it, we have to create this. Alright? We have to create this. Remember those, those issues. So, <coughs> any presented checks are added, okay? They are added to the cash book balance. Remember oh, the, the way we, we started to display, I mean, this presentation. We said that unpresented checks have to be added, all right? Similarly, a standing order, uh, uh, a credit entry of standing order, means that it has to be added uh, back. Mm. Just wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Uh, 
Okay, yes in that uh, standing order. Let's see, in that way. The standing order, this is the uh, customer, okay, the customer uh, or customer deduction, which has been credited to or this is, this is credit or account uh, has been ended twice. So this are uh, that indicated already earlier on. These are the Okay, so we get it. Right. Now since they were debited, we only wanted one end, one debit end, not two. So in this case, we just have to uh, credit another. So by crediting, we are actually not increasing the cash balance, but we are reducing it. So it is the uh, extended of a dangerous, uh, not uh, an extended case. So it is the tendency of a dangerous case rather. So what we do is we just have to do that. Right, we have to that. Right. Okay, then we have got the owner this owner check here of uh, 450 in the case of the being credited. Now, a this owner check uh, is a receipt but which has failed to meet its purpose. Okay. So it becomes more of a penny. Right? It is invested. But instead of being credited. Because the reason why it is being credited is that it is sold to because it is it has not been affected by the bank. So we have to create that to ensure that the customer is the, the account is not is too open. So we have the customer is they say uh, we have to receive, we have to get it, make it so that we have to receive money. However, if the payment has been uh, rejected by the bank, then we have to make a credit end to nullify that uh, previous legitimate account. Alright. So, uh, what is the impact? The impact is that uh, by debiting it, it means that we have uh, created a wrong end, which has been nullified. So, the there is now a double impact in this case. There is a double impact, uh, which means that it becomes 450 by 2, which is 900 dollars. This 900 dollars has to be is an effect of a an in this case. It is added. Okay, so it is added to the balance of it. Alright. So this is now going to be our balance of bank statement, which is uh, if we use our calculator. We must come through that's negative five six seven five plus one twenty five minus ten and Okay, so 
draw answer time uh, but remember this is negative so this is an overdrawn okay overdrawn so that's D so answer now lastly we are going to do this one and we call it a day uh, so that uh, we start something on your page so I would want to urge you that uh, after watching this video you have to do uh, the other questions there are only um, three questions outstanding but um, so uh, the search I want you you guys to do this question okay I want you to do this question which is uh, something something which has been always uh, tested by examiners so uh, I will leave question 8 for you to do using the principles I've explained so far you just have to as in this case you just have to um, let us read it together the following information is to be used to prepare the conclusion Balance the case book. Uh, it won March 2022, so it's very recent. Amount paid in not yet appearing on the bank statement. Uh, these are uncashed books in unprecedented checks. Bank charge is not in cash book. So it was received from a customer sent to bank but not in cash book for 03. Alright? <coughs> So what is the balance shown on the bank statement? Is it the face? Blah blah blah. So in this case, you can see that there are some items which need to be used for the updating of cash book. This one, this one to be used to update the This one is to update the cash book by this one just to appear in the bank recognition statement. All right, and this one again is um, some. Uh, balance to be called balance put forward when you are updating the cash book right then after doing all that then you have to arrive to come to the bank reconciliation so just like adjust the balance if you just like the, the balance put forward uh, if you just replay this video there was a question where we first updated the cash book using the balance put forward and then we, we do the rest uh, I think it's question number question number number six. This one, where we first updated the case book using the uh, original case balance, which was two hundred dollars here. That was two hundred dollars, and this is the two hundred here here. So you just have to have a balance put forward, depending on the side of the uh, uh, balance. Sometimes it is a credit balance put forward sometimes it's a debit in this case it was a debit balance uh, on the cash book so you just have to be mindful of that fact so here it is also a debit balance so the job is much easier so just use the same principles and then uh, after you do your bank conciliation statement then you just have to submit for marking you also have to do the rest of the question uh, within uh, the script which I've sent to you and the other ones are just discussive questions which are not problematic when it comes to work. So I want you to do this question number this question number eight alone and then you then have to also do the rest which are discussive the other three they are just discussive questions you no need to do any computation you just have to use the common sense so that you answer those ones and then after you do that then you submit and you go to the next uh, lecture okay to the next stage within our lecture series i hope you have benefited a lot uh, from uh, this computation this uh, presentation remember that uh, the idea was not for me to arrive at the 
answer but for me to give you the technique because you're not going to face this question in this exam you're going to face this question by the end of the day you just have to know what you're supposed to do i mean to i mean how you're supposed to do a bank reconciliation you mustn't be intimidated by a bank reconciliation just follow the steps you can get it to just with the understanding of the double entry what will be happening when a certain transaction has occurred what is the effect how is it going to be corrected if it is very very stop error i hope you have been assisted if you if you still need further assistance don't be afraid to contact me this is why you have hired me just um, contact me anytime all right if you also feel you need further assistance maybe you are not with our student and you still uh, feel we, we can be of assistance also just do not hesitate to contact us feel free to contact us we are always there for you wherever you are our students are learning ARCA online if this video is helpful please do not forget to subscribe and we also have to hit the notification bell so that whenever we upload videos on youtube you are not going to be left out you will be notified until we meet again may the good Lord bless you thank you